Hi, and welcome to our demonstration of the Student Files Developer Bundle for Alfresco. I'm Gary Cox, and I'm a senior consultant with Bluefish Development Group. In this video today, we're going to highlight the features of our Student Files Developer, Developer Bundle product. Student Files was created to help schools maintain an Alfresco share site for managing student documents. The product adds the following features to Alfresco. It allows for synchronization with an external database table for retrieving student information. It also allows for creation and maintenance of a folder structure for student documents in an Alfresco share site. And this includes automatic permission management of folders, and this based on pre-configured rules. In addition, the solution supports automatic renaming and filing of documents that are brought into the site. And lastly, student documents and folders have aspect metadata attached to it to make searching easy. We call this a developer bundle. What that means is we provide not only a working example solution, which we'll walk through today, but we also provide the necessary code and artifacts that will allow you to extend and customize the code as needed for your own environment and deployment. The developer bundle includes the necessary tools to build your own custom AMP files for Alfresco so that you can extend the solution. So let's move on to our demonstration. So here we are in our student file site. It's important to remember that the site name and, and folder structures can be configured as needed, but the out-of-the-box example uh, uses student file site and then student documents as the main filing folder. We're going to walk from start to finish on creation of the folder structure and permissions, but before moving on I wanted to show uh, an existing example. You can see under student documents there's a subfolder for each entry year for students. If we go into a, an entry year, we can see a list of all the students for that year. It's important to know that this is pulled from a database and that's external to Alfresco and the format of the naming con the con convention can be changed if needed. By default we're using last name, first name, middle initial, and student ID. Underneath each student folder is a set of subfolders and the names of the subfolders as well as the permissions that need to be set can be configured as well. So we're going to walk through the process of starting out with an empty site and synchronizing with an external database and then go through the permissions. And then we'll go through some filing examples where we actually file some documents and they're automatically put in their student folders. Okay, so we're back and I've actually just uh, cleared out the folder structure underneath student documents. So this is now completely empty. We don't have any students synchronized. I'm going to walk through kind of an example process. The student files bundle comes with an external database table um, so that it can be used right out of the box for an example. However, you can actually add your own external database if needed table um, and modify fields as needed um, based on your own uh, data needs. For our example, we have a student ID, an Alfresco user ID for the, each student, a student last name, first name, middle initial, and then location, department, advisor name, student email, and then the entry year of the student, uh, I guess the, the year they basically started. All this data is pulled in and used by Alfresco. This exists in a Postgres database by default, but again, you can use a different database. We make a uh, JDBC connection to an external database, and so you can pull in data uh, from an external source. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So we have a basically a web script that will do the initial setup and then a synchronization job that runs periodically to update student information and to lock down permissions and so forth. So we're going to run a web script that will actually create the entire folder structure. And that just takes a few moments to run. We only have a few students. And you can see it's completed successfully. If we come back into here, you can see A call was made to the external database and all the student information was brought in. Now if we actually go into a student, let's go into 2015, we can see that permissions have been set specifically for the student, each student folder automatically based on rules. And we specify exactly which groups have access and what kind of access. This is all through configuration that can be customized through the bundle as needed. And then each subfolder can either inherit permissions from the parent student folder or it can have its own permissions set. In this case, we are setting it specifically for this folder, so we're turning off inherit. 
and we're specifying exactly who has access either by group name or by individual name. This is the advisor and this is the actual student. And this can be set for each folder underneath the student folder. It's important to know that we actually also set student information aspect on the folder so that it can be easily be searched for. So we're going to do that real quick right now. So if we search for the student ID, I'm going to search for my student here. And then we'll come back with a student folder basically that contains the information for the student. And you can see you can easily search for a student by student ID and click on the folder and then see all the, doc the folders and documents underneath. So all of this, the creation of the folder structure is configurable. The permissions set on the folder structure is config configurable. There's also another aspect now where we want to automatically file documents rather than having to manually move down into the folder structure to put documents in place. And maybe they, they'd be filed wrong because uh, a human would have to make a decision on where they go. We set up automatic filing rules. So here, there's a few example documents provided. And we have an action basically configured as an example out of the box that reads a student ID and a document type and figures out where to file the document. Based on the student ID, it looks for the student, ID, student folder. And then we have a mapping set up between different types of documents and the folders that they need to go into. The nice thing here is there's really not a decision that needs to be made by a human. We just need to move these into an inbox and they'll automatically be renamed and filed. Now for our example, we're not actually renaming them beyond ID uh, and document type, but there's automatic parsing that can be done to set things like date and so forth. But let's do this right now. We're going to select all of these documents. And you see we have student ID 1, 111, 2, 3, 4, and 999. And we're just going to move all or copy all of these into our inbox. And this inbox has a set of rules that should automatically file these documents and then they should be renamed. So we're going to do that right now. So those were already copied. That's all we had to do. And if we go into our student, find our student, this one this has 999. We see this is an application document. We've set up a mapping rule where we automatically decide to file applications under the advising folder. And the nice thing here is, if I go to permissions, the document that's filed under the advising folder has its permissions set based on the advising folder rules. So only certain people can see these documents. And we've decided what rights they have on these documents. For example, the student or, and their advisor only have read rights. They don't have a, the ability to write to a document or delete it. Whereas the registrar's office and academic affairs office can do basically anything they need to for the document. And if we go back, we can see other documents were filed as well. And these are just mapping rules that are set up and these can be configured as needed. And now it's possible to go to advanced search and actually look for a document of a first student ID or it can also be searched by name if needed, student name. And we'll actually constrain it to not only student ID, but documents of a certain type. So we run that search and easily retrieve exam credit documents for student ID 222222. And you can see each document has first name, last name, middle initial, student ID, and so forth placed on it. And these models and everything are provided out of the box. Um, as an example. However, these could be customized if needed because we provide basically the whole developer bundle. So it's possible to extend this or change this as needed, but the framework is already in place and a full working example is in place as well. So that's just a short demonstration of the features of the product. Please contact us if you want to see a more detailed demonstration, including inform more information about the bundle itself for developing uh, customized solutions. But today we basically pulled an entire set of student data from an external database and based on that data created a whole folder structure and a site in Alfresco. Then based on configured rules we created subfolders for each student in just a matter of seconds. And on each of those folders we set uh, permissions based on our own rules. 
In addition, we were able to quickly file documents that were brought into the site without a human user having to decide where documents go. They're basically filed by rule. We have a simple renaming logic here that can be extended as needed with template variables, so you can have a naming convention based on your own needs. Well, thank you for joining us today. If you want more information about the Student Files Developer Bundle, please contact us either by sending us an email here at info at bluefishgroup.com or feel free to visit our website at www.bluefishgroup.com. Thank you for watching.